is Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop. We have a Fender Resophonic guitar here in the shop today. The complaint with it is that it's buzzing quite a bit. He also wants this strap button removed and the hole filled. He plays it like a guitar. It's not played like a dobro. In other words, it's got the low action. So it is buzzing. I uh, don't think you're going to hear the buzzing very well on the camera here, but we'll see what happens. Um, when you hit the uh, high E string, I can hear a little rattle afterwards. Now, in my opinion, the action on that string is a little bit low. Um, it's only probably about eight thousandths high. I set them to around 18 generally. Um, so it could be partly that, but it's also probably, I think it's buzzing out of the nut and possibly buzzing off of the, off of the little saddle back here. And he wants me to change these saddles out and put them in, make them bone or something else other than that cheap plastic. Um, he also feels like there's some kind of a rattle going on in the cone area. Um, when I was first tuning it up, I thought I heard that too, but now that it's full tuned, I don't hear anything going on down in the cone but uh, we'll pay close attention to that as we work on it to see if we do hear anything there. I believe that's about it, so we'll get started. One of the first things I've noticed as I started loosening the uh, pegs here to take the strings off is this particular one turns way harder than all the other five. The other five turn real easy. This one's really hard to turn, so I'm going to uh, look into that and see if we can't figure out what's going on with that tuning key there. Since I've got it in the shop here and since I've got the strings off of it, I'm going to go ahead, even though I don't really hear much going wrong in here, I'm going to take this apart and just take a look at it to see if there's anything that can be improved in this area. Sometimes if things aren't meeting up perfectly, then it kind of kills some of your sound. I am not a resophonic expert by any stretch, but I've got a lot of friends that play them and they talk about how tedious they are. I've worked on some of their instruments in the past and they felt like I did the right thing. So I, you know, I don't consider myself an expert at all, but I do think I understand them to some degree. Therefore, I'm going to take a look at this one and see what we can learn about this one. I'm noticing uh, this lid is torqued a little bit. I don't know if that should be that way. I don't think it really should. There's, you know, some dirt and dust and stuff underneath there. The cone itself, now see I didn't take that apart, but that cone wasn't sitting straight. I can tell that the screw is loose here on this cone too, so the, the uh, spider is very loose and I don't believe we ought to have it loose like that. I'm going to go a little deeper into it. I'm going to go ahead and take the cone out of it now and see what we can learn about the underside here. I do think there's some looseness going on which I think uh, helps kill some of the sound. We need for it to, to be real good and tight everywhere. Okay, I've removed all the screws here. Haven't taken it out yet. I'm going to take it out right now. And it's just, you know, it's just loose. It just shouldn't be that loose, I don't believe. One saddle fell out of there. It's got a compensated saddle in it. And uh, that may be necessary. It may not. I don't know. I didn't have to take that out, I know, to tighten this, but I wanted to just take it out to take a look at it to see. I'm going to go ahead and snug that up. Now it's not loose anymore. I'm going to uh, line it up with the screw holes here. That, that gets it lined up better, and then I'm going to go ahead and torque it down a little bit. Again, I'm not going to go real tight with this because I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. I just want it to be snug. You can just so you can see that's that's how it tightens up right there. There's something stuck to the bottom of the cone there, which you know I don't think we want anything on there. I'm going to go ahead and clean this cone. Uh, I'm going to clean this rim around here. There's a little bit of dirt and stuff. I want it to meet meet up just as flat and smooth as we can get it to meet up when we put it back together. It doesn't look like there's any problem though. I don't really see a real problem. I think the only problem is that that was just loose. Looking at the bracing in there, the bracing looks okay. Yeah, I think everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, there's actually more junk in there than you would think. 
Just so you can take a look inside yourselves there, you can see what how it's kind of made. And uh, here's a look back at the back end. Okay, I think we're fine. I think we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, I'm actually going to go ahead and clean this cone a little bit because there's some sticky junk on here, and I, and I know that shouldn't be there. Um, also, there's places where the cone is pulled down because of the screws. I'm going to go ahead and flatten all that back out before I put it back together. You can see it's supposed to be flat like some of these others. Wiping down the cone with acetone. Acetone will clean a lot of stuff. Expected it to clean this with no problem, but maybe that's just a stain left from the sticky stuff. I don't know. I like acetone because it doesn't really leave much residue of any sort and it dries very quickly. Got a little small piece of steel here, <coughs> fairly solid piece of steel. This is very lightweight aluminum and I'm just basically going to mash these items back out flat, maybe tap it a little bit with the hammer just to get them good and flat. Doesn't take very much with this aluminum, it's very lightweight. Some of them are already pretty flat, some of them are pretty coned. Here's a really bad one here. Here's a dimple in the cone on the edge. I believe that's it. Okay, that's quite a bit better than where we started. Just looking at the spider itself to see that it's touching all the way around, and it appears to be. So the cone doesn't appear to be damaged and warped or anything. Set her back in here. <clears throat> Make sure all the holes line up. They appear to. They appears to be the way it's supposed to be because I see little marks that indicate that this is exactly how it came out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cone back in, but I'm going to leave it leave the cover off yet because I'm going to make the uh, the new pieces of saddle. I'll point out something I've noticed here. I was wondering why there were some screw holes right at the edge of the cone and other ones there's not. Um, the cover is, is sitting on here obviously uh, not in the center of this hole. Now maybe the hole's not in the right place, I don't know, but <clears throat> maybe they were taking the cover and straightening out, out that issue. But the holes, in other words, this is the treble side of the guitar and the holes are that way. The whole cover is that way compared to the, to the actual hole. In other words, the cover slid that direction quite a bit. Now, I don't know if that needs to be there or not, but we're going to look at that close when we put the cover back on, too. All right, I have these cones screwed back in. It's tight. Now you don't hear any more rattle, I don't believe. Actually, there's a little bit of a rattle there, but that may just be, maybe I just need to tighten it a hair more. <clears throat> yep, that fixed that. So now there's no rattle there at all. What I wanted to show you was what I was talking about, about the cover being offset. You can see how these screws are, screw holes are right on the edge of the circle. And a matter of fact, this one actually kind of goes into the circle, and this one's right on the edge. On this side, they're quite a bit away from the circle. Obviously, there's something wrong there. I'm not exactly sure what the idea is. So we're going to look at that real close and see when we put this back on there if... Uh, if it needs to be like that or what. It, it appears to be lined up on the guitar when the when I've got the holes lined up here. It appears to be symmetrical on the top of the guitar. So I'm assuming that the hole was cut slightly off center. Looking at the bridge I will say that the cover is that way of the bridge, just a little bit in there. Just a little bit. Not very much, but a little bit. I don't know. We'll just have to take a look at that as we put her back together and see if there's anything we can do to improve it. 
All right, I'm about ready to make the saddle for this, and I'm debating on a couple things. First of all, this saddle is very loose in the slot. Well, actually, on one side it's not so loose, but the other side is pretty loose. This side's really loose, it just falls out of there. So I'm gonna make it tight in the slot. I think you can see that I have a deer antler saddle on here. It's fitting as tight as it can fit. It, it, it just fits the slot nice and snug. It wouldn't fall out if you turned it upside down. And I do have it going all the way across. Like I said, we can always cut that out if that seems to be a problem. But I just thought I'd try it first this way. I kind of think it's going to give a real good sound. I kind of my theory is that by you know this string on this far end will help transfer the sound all the way across because the saddle is going all the way across. I just think you'll get a fuller sound out of your dobro. Let's see what happens. Putting the screws back in this, and uh, it brings to mind what my buddy uh, Jeff Bradshaw up there with uh, ElderlyIron.com always says. He says, you start them all before you tighten any. And I think that applies a whole lot right here because there's a lot of screws to be put in here. And if you go crazy and start tightening them all up, then some will not fit probably. Uh, it's hard to get something like this to all line up perfectly. I didn't change the cover because it does look like it's lined up with the top of the guitar. It's just not lined up with the hole and the cone. So it is what it is. I can't change how that hole was cut in the top here very easily. I mean, anything's possible, but uh, that would be beyond reason, I think. So we'll just go with it the way it is. Okay, we have them all started, and now we will just tighten them all. No rattling and vibrating like it was before. We'll put the tail piece back on and give her some strings. Well, if I'd have been thinking, I would have looked down the neck a little bit before I put this cover back on. I can still see down the neck pretty good. The one side looks pretty good. The treble side looks pretty good. There looks to be a low spot, believe it or not, right here where it's connected to the body. On the other side, it it's if anything, it's high all the way. It's got a long hump on the on the base side. Um, that's kind of strange, but it does. It has a long hump on the base side, and it has an under bow on this side. So I am going to take a fret leveling file to this and try to you know uh, offset that to some degree and try to reach an average because it's definitely different from one side to the other and I'd like to get it all in roughly about the same plane of course it is got a, a slightly uh, radius fretboard also <laughs> Gonna look down it again. Doesn't look too bad. If anything, it does look like there's a slight overbow in it, which could indicate the truss rod might be too tight. I'm just gonna check the truss rod. Off camera, I loosened the truss rod and I held here and pushed down here. I was amazed how easily it was to underbow it. So therefore, I'm assuming the truss rod does need to be that tight, so I tightened it back up to where it was. Looking down at it, I still see a slide over bow, but I'm pretty sure that's going to pull out once we put the strings on it. So I'm going to leave it like that for now, and we'll adjust it if we need to after we get the tension back on it. I've leveled the frets just lightly. Like I said, right in here, this fret hasn't even been touched. This one barely and this one barely. And, uh, and that's because there was kind of a low spot in there. Now, why, I don't know. I, it's just unusual. But it, that's the way it was. So, uh, now I'm going to recrown the frets.
think you can see it looks like a brand new fretboard now. We're about ready to start putting the strings on it and see what happens. But before we do that, I'm just going to see if there's anything I can do up here on this one tuning key. Uh, it sure is tight. I don't know why that one key is so tight. It, they're closed tuners, so maybe it's just that this screw is extra tight on this head here, maybe. Because it's really tight. These are much looser. This one's really tight. Take it all the way off and see if there's anything going on that way. Well, I'm pulling it loose and it's still turning tight, so it's got nothing to do with the knob itself. It's inside, or it's either inside here, or it's rubbing something going down through the peg head. So I'm going to take it out, and just to see if there's something going on, it just may be pinched or something. We'll have to loosen this little nut right there. I don't know that it has anything to do with it or not, but there's a lot of residue of maybe waxes and polishes or something that have gotten down in there. I don't know if that has anything to do with it at all. It's still pretty hard to turn after I take it out of there. I'm going to try to drop some oil down inside of here and see if that'll help it at all. It might be getting a hair looser now, but it's still pretty tight. So we'll try a little oil. I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not, but you can see little teeny tiny oily spots in the pores um, that start working their way back out. So after you put linseed oil on, after a few minutes, you need to wipe it again. And that's, that's what I always do. And uh, after that, then you're fine, you're good to go. Okay, we got some oil for this tuning key, and I'm just going to pour it down in there. You know, some people say it makes them slip, but it does not do that. Um, you can oil your tuning keys, and it's not a problem. Who knows, that might fix this one to where it works better, because it sure doesn't work that great. It's, for some reason, a lot tighter than the rest of them. None of the rest of them are near that tight. Doesn't appear to be bent or anything, so... It's just the, either the way it's made, or it's just dried out and gotten sticky somehow or another. I don't know what the deal is. Pouring a little oil in there to see if that helps. Can't tell a whole lot of difference yet. Well, I'm just going to have to call that good enough. I'm going to pour the oil back out of here now, in case there's any residual there. We'll put her back together and just go that way. Tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to put a drop of oil in this ferrule too, just because it might be rubbing in this ferrule. Yeah, it's still a little tighter, but it's definitely a little better than it was. It's not great. It's just a little better than it was. Um, these turn just much easier. All the rest of them turn much easier. This one now, instead of feeling hard to turn, I would say I would call it a medium hard to turn. Because it was pretty hard before. It's the best we can do with it. You can only do what you can do. Alright, so let's string this thing up and see what she does. I just thought of something I failed to mention on the saddle that's going across there. Like I said, I left it whole for now. And I did go back and file little tiny string grooves in it to separate the strings and get them, you know, spread out across there. So there are little tiny string grooves so that when the strings are coming off of here, they have a place to sit on that saddle. And I spread them out better, I think, than the way they were on the previous saddle. I think they were kind of messed up on the spread out. I won't lie to you. It doesn't sound that great. There's a problem. Um, the sound of the instrument is fine. But there's a rattle going on in the comb. I don't know if you can. There's an underneath rattle. And I'm sure it's that the spider is not tight to the cone. Now I can even see more the importance of having the two-piece saddle so that you can adjust it. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart, cut that saddle into two pieces, 
and adjust this with the tension on it, I can see that that's the problem here. It needs to be tightened up while that tension is on this. So we're going to work on that here off camera for a minute. I've, I just unhooked the strings from the back here. I took the saddle out. I cut the saddle in two. And just as before, I have my groove real close to the end of the saddle. I think you can see that. And I'm putting the base side back in as we speak. And it's not that hard to do. It's a little tricky with the uh, cover on there. It would be easier, of course, if the cover was not on there, but it's not that hard. And it takes longer to take the cover off and put it back on than it does to just do this. There, it's in place. And I think I've got it lined up just right. Now we'll put the strings back on it, tune it back up. I guess I should have had the camera on there. I went ahead, uh, you know, I've got the split saddle in there as you can see. And I uh, tuned it back up. And as I was tuning it up, I could hear it vibrating. I waited till I got it up to full pitch. Then I went ahead and tightened that screw down there to tighten up the spider to the cone. And that's what that does, is it tightens the spider to the cone. The tension pushing down on that spider caused that distance of the screw to short. I mean, well, it, it need, the screw needed to shorten up that distance because the distance collapsed. So we had to shorten the screw there to take up the difference. Anyway, once I did that, the buzzing seems to be gone now. And uh, we're in pretty darn good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and play it and see what it sounds like. Just thought I'd show you that the action's pretty darn good too. The action down here is at 80 thousandths. On this side, it's right at 90 thousandths. So it's very, very good action. You know, to play a guitar like this, you kind of got to have the blue. Let's see what the old Fender Resophonic sounds like. I think I've got them deep Ellen blues. When you go down to Deep Ellum, keep some money in your shoes. Those people in Deep Ellum got them Deep Ellum Blues. Hey, sweet mama, your daddy's got them Deep Ellum Blues. Oh, hey, sweet mama, your daddy's got them Deep Ellum Blues. When you go down to Deep Ellum just to have a little fun Keep ten dollars in your pocket just in case the police come Hey sweet mama, daddy's got them Deep Ellum Blues Oh hey sweet mama, your daddy's got them Deep Ellum Blues Daddy's got them deep Ellen Blues. Well, that's a pretty good guitar. Uh, definitely improved sound. Uh, the deer antler, I'm sure, gives it a good sound uh, transfer. And the fact that we've got that cone straightened out, got all the little humps out of the cone, and we got it uh, tightened up and got it tightened up through here. And uh, we've got the action really low up here. It's below 18 thousandths in most places. And it's, as I said, 80 to 90 thousandths here. So it's a very easy to play instrument. And I think it sounds real good. I believe we accomplished what this customer was looking for. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.